Hi, hello. Welcome back to Character Design. Today we are going to talk about research. We are talking about uh, how we can collect information in order to improve uh, our products. We will think in the way we look for new ideas, the way we transform them, and the way we collect uh, and evaluate different uh, sources. Okay, we will talk also about how writing this, how referencing and all that stuff. A character should be as well designed that just by looking at it, you should gather a lot of information. If you remember uh, or you have uh, watched any movie by Sherlock Holmes, you would find that particular, very familiar uh, uh, procedure of the character uh, when looking at uh, a situation or a new person is able to uh, gather a lot of information, to deduct a lot of things about, uh, about this particular uh, subject. That is what it should be uh, easy to do when you design a good character. So there is no magic here. What we are uh, up to is to uh, understand the way we gather information, we process information, in order to, uh, for example, uh, do research, but the same way when we want to create a character or when we want to do any kind of creative practice. This is uh, one of these uh, diagrams that show us how to conduct research, how to uh, transform information, okay? Um, specifically designed for uh, university students. If you adapt this to the process of uh, finding information about a character, that character that didn't exist yet is the character you are creating, of course. Then you get uh, this uh, kind of uh, description of what a creative process could be. First of all, reading your assignment, creating a working title on your project and start planning your work. This shouldn't be that much time. If you think about that, this uh, shouldn't take you uh, most of the time. However, we know for experience that sometimes students spend a lot of time on this. We like to fantasize, to, to uh, play with the ideas. We want to, to have them in mind and thinking this is going to be great. Oh, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do, but this sounds great. 
Well, the thing is, the sooner you put that on paper, the better. You really need to work on paper, paper, digital. You need to work on physical or virtual, but things that are tangible. Okay, you cannot just be always working with abstractions, you know, thinking how beautiful or how wonderful is your idea. You really need to write it down. Then there will be some element of selecting the sources going to a specific place, finding information you want about how to do that, that you wanted to do better. Okay, and then obviously working working, writing, if it's an academic dissertation, if it's a portfolio, there will be some elements of writing as well. If it's just designing, just designing, drawing, okay, but working. This is uh, very important and it would take most of your time. But if you think about these other uh, aspects, these other tasks, they are important as well. There's time here to spend as well, okay? And then you have to finish the work. Some people go literally here, and that uh, can be uh, can be valid if you manage to finish. The problem is when you go literally to here, most of the time you spend much more time because you didn't plan properly. If you plan properly, you would save time in all these uh, later stages. Okay, first first of all, uh, let's go to the basics. Uh, read your assignment. Check what does your assignment say about what you have to do. Try to understand what are the learning outcomes. I mean, I know it's an abstract uh, concept. Sometimes it doesn't mean anything for the students, but just think about what am I supposed to learn in this module? What am I supposed to get at the end of the process? And then how can I show that through my work? through my assignment. Second, create your working title. That is a kind of way of pitching your uh, project. Okay, so imagine that I create an assignment and in that assignment I tell you, yes, construct a dinosaur, design a dinosaur. Probably I would be more specific on that because assignments usually try to be specific to uh, deliver as much information uh, as we can to try to guide the, the student on the process and all this and you know uh, we try to be clear but if I to ask you yes as a creative exercise construct a dinosaur create a character that is a dinosaur what uh, would you start thinking of would you have in mind uh, something like a bipet like a realistic uh, dinosaur like something cute would you think in a herbivore you dinosaur or you would think of a carnivore dinosaur? Many of you would think of a, a T-Rex or a Velociraptor, the most popular of all the dinosaurs, I guess. Okay? Some of you might think of a Triceratops. The thing is, we are going to assume that uh, we don't know anything about this. We don't have any idea. We don't have any uh, immediate feeling or immediate idea about how to construct this dinosaur. We are going to avoid the things that are in our head already about what dinosaurs usually are. So first of all, we should read our assignment and try to think, is there any other tip in the assignment in relation to construct a dinosaur? Does it say something about uh, what kind of format, what kind of um, tools we have to use? Uh, would it be just one drawing, several drawings? What kind of information we have to deliver as an outcome for our process? Okay, understanding the assignment is basic. Okay, we need to really know what this students are supposed to do, we need to know what the uh, lecturer expects us to do, okay? And now we can start drawing, we can start looking for references, we can start uh, thinking about what a dinosaur should be. Nowadays, we tend to look for ideas without computer. 
We tend not to walk, not to uh, explore, not to think of the things more than uh, accessing to Google and Googling what other people do. Creativity could be much more than that. In the old times, people tend to go with a notepad everywhere, just note down everything that they think of, trying to link different concepts. There is no a single way to do the thing of uh, to create ideas or to look for ideas. There are many ways. I suggest to try as many as you can. Okay, just try to get up, go to the street, interact with people, go to a library, just randomly go into a loan of books or a, a loan of magazines in a supermarket or just go into a supermarket to see food. You know, sometimes all these things just bring us idea, just randomize, you know, all the information of our, our brain, okay? And then maybe you find something there in relation to the problem. Of course, you need to look for that information with the problem in your head, with that question. You need to go to supermarket or anywhere you go with that thing in mind. What kind of dinosaur would go to a supermarket? Why not thinking in dinosaurs that eat fruits? A carnivore that eats fruits, for example. A T-Rex that is vegetarian. Okay, stupid thing, stupid stuff. But it is about moving and starting to create connections elsewhere. Doesn't mean you cannot go to Pinterest or DeviantArt or any other repository, that's fine. What I'm saying is that don't let uh, yourself to explore uh, all the things. Don't, don't forget that there are other options, okay? When uh, examining other examples of character design, we understand that one of the most important things is the scale. Okay, is it our character going to interact with the real world? Is it going to be uh, the, um, the center of its own world, its own scale? Is it going to be anthropomorphic? Is it going to be equal to human in terms of scale or in terms of proportions? So obviously, uh, one of the most important things when defining a character is saying basically how big it's going to be. Other examples of scale, no? anthropomorphic characters, like this uh, amazing movie, and I'm saying amazing not in a great uh, sense, it's really something weird, okay? And, uh, but you have many examples, no? Okay, so getting ma images and manipulating them, or for example, what it seems they did, probably they did them, but probably they just got uh, you know, another character and they just put the face or the, the head of a dinosaur. So create this kind of concept of the Theodore Rex. Uh, you have to, to admit that the name is quite good. And that's obviously is, is the other point. Working title, okay? There is something already, if you think my dinosaur is going to be called Barney, or is going to be called Darren, or uh, uh, don't know any other uh, name, like uh, imagine a dinosaur called Manuel. That's something there, okay? I mean, obviously, it's a working title. Thinking of Manuel, the Spanish dinosaur. That's a, a stupid idea, of course. But uh, what you can think of that is how a working title is already giving me some directions about where my character could be. And then, of course, plan your work. What am I going to need? At this point, I'm not very sure what kind of technique I'm going to, to do, but I might have some ideas. I might know, for example, we have some conditions already, so, for example, we know that we are going to use uh, Autodesk Maya and CBrush 
Okay, so if we are working with these tools, maybe we need to plan right now what is our current uh, level of skills with these uh, tools. Do we know exactly what are the techniques we want to use? Are we going to use hair? Are we going to, um, to do organic sculpture? Are we going to use uh, basic shapes uh, to start uh, you know, prototyping this character? So obviously we need to spend time with this and we need to plan how much time we are going to spend on that. So what about selecting sources? We talked about uh, gathering information before. What kind of inspiration we can look for? Think about your favorite movies, books, or video games. There are other many stories out there. Okay, in things like architecture or history, you can also find inspiration for your characters. Yeah, you can think of architecture is always designed for the human being. Human beings are characters. Think about your characters as having to live in particular architectures or particular cities or particular scenarios. And then that would frame, that would condition the, the way you uh, design that character. Use photography, art, music to try to find the emotion or the aspect you love more about a particular uh, cultural product or a particular piece of art. When you are reading and when you are comparing different sources, I mean, compare is, is a basic element here because I'm saying, I'm implying that you cannot just get everything you read or just okay i'm going to spend half an hour i'm going to read three things i'm going to copy and paste the links and that is that is not the way it works what you do is read compare and select the sources that have the most quality the the ones that are telling you something something useful and you have to be used to the idea that many of the things you will explore won't really be useful at all. It's normal. These things take time. When you do your visual research, you need to uh, organize the information gathered through categories. It is not the same, for example, to look for references in terms of uh, the character. Like, for example, imagine you are designing this dinosaur or the companion, the girl, or uh, you know any other accessory there. You can also look for references in relation to the environment or the light or the colors. The basic idea is that you get the vocabulary of the concepts uh, that you want to uh, communicate through your work. It sounds very technical, but it's more simple than that. Basically, if you cannot use the right words, maybe you cannot communicate effectively what you are up to. If you want to, uh, or if you talk about photorealism, thinking, for example, in dinosaurs, then basically you are thinking in, uh, you know, realistic uh, representation of these animals. For example, the movies, Jurassic World, Jurassic Park, all these movies, all these franchise, they are basically constructed, or uh, the big appeal of these movies is to be able to create believable characters. Pay attention to the fact that actually this doesn't tell us anything about what the product is. You can have also realistic characters in uh, other formats, other genres, in uh, comedies or even in animation. In 2000, uh, Disney released this movie called Dinosaur, and it wasn't very successful. Maybe it wasn't very successful because uh, people really didn't like that much those characters. They were photorealistic. They were uh, using this particular technique that was before uh, popularized by BBC in the series Walking by with Dinosaurs. And uh, maybe it didn't work for Disney, I don't know. I mean, there are many reasons for a movie to not be, uh, you know, successful. From realism to something more uh, iconic, 
you remember well that theory of Scott McClough, you have elements like uh, these kind of works on the illustration, uh, more stylized, more, uh, you know, uh, similar to the illustration, of course. Okay, we have character designs here, like this example of Parasaurolophus is... Some years ago, for example, there was uh, one of these um, um, fighting games, no? Tekken 3, and they use it to have this uh, cute dinosaur, which is very cartoonistic. This one is actually an adaptation of a, a comic book uh, by an author, a Japanese author. It's, it's a manga, uh, and this uh, is basically uh, the adaptation they did in 3D, cartoonistic about that. If you think, for example, about the good dinosaur, uh, probably much more successful than the other dinosaur movie by Disney, and this one, uh, obviously, the character design is much more cartoonistic, okay? The basic difference between cartoonistic and stylized... Uh, the, best, the basic difference between cartoonistic and other systems of uh, representation more uh, near to illustration is that illustration still keeps some uh, proportion. Okay, in cartoon, uh, the tradition of the cartoon is the emotion uh, over the proportion, over the realism. So obviously when you have a dinosaur like this one with such a big head, or when you have so, such big eyes, uh, all these, you know, uh, transformations uh, of the face and of the anatomy, then you are clearly into, uh, you are clearly with uh, experience a, a cartoonistic approach, of course. And of course, if we talk about anthropomorphism, we need to talk again to this uh, wonderful, awful movie, you know? But uh, I can imagine that there must be many, many other examples of characters that are designed to be dinosaurs, but at the same time, they are still recognizable as some kind of human form or some kind of human approach. If you remember the pyramid, uh, made by uh, Scott McClough, uh, illustrating his theory, you would remember that one of the uh, vertex is uh, the abstraction. Okay, you have the iconic elements, the, the realism, and then you have the abstraction. If a character is too abstract, wouldn't be recognized. But it could be a good interesting exercise if a character is too abstract, it might not be recognized, but it can be maybe a, a useful exercise sometimes to reduce to the basic, most elemental uh, features of a character to these abstractions. I did this exercise uh, practicing with this illustration of um, a dinosaur and, and this uh, made me think about kind of the basic features of uh, what an abstraction of uh, a dinosaur could be, you know. Uh, obviously, if you, you don't add uh, the hunchback, you will have a dog, and you don't want a dog. One of the things is clearly in this case, because it is a T-Rex, the, the hands are very short, okay? Uh, what about, uh, here you see that it's basically very nice, okay? The way the, the face is looking at you, it's looking uh, up, is clearly making it more uh, fun, more uh, friendly, okay? A character would usually look down, no? If it's a big Tyrannosaur, if it's a big T-Rex, it's going to look to you. It's looking down to you, okay? So obviously, that is another element that you can see when I synthesize this uh, uh, concept, okay? And now is the hard part. It is about testing. Testing with ourselves, with other friends, colleagues that are looking at our work, uh, maybe in class exposing all our alternatives, 
thinking critically about our own ideas. And this is a hard time because it might uh, mean that all the work you have done so far is not good enough. It might mean uh, that you need to still work more. That's normal, that's part of the process and you have to do it. Again, looking for inspiration from all the uh, media, like understanding the main principles of uh, level design, photography. We have talked about this in other modules. Maybe allocating some of these ideas about what kind of primary or dominant light, if it's warm or cold, how that is going to affect our character. And if you think about this, there are many examples of this. When you do a movie of, uh, with characters like dinosaurs and you are using this kind of cool lights and you are trying to reflect that kind of reptilian scheme, uh, obviously you are working on the realism and you are working on creating tetric, uh, dark uh, textures here. Okay, so you are basically constru constructing low-key scenes the same way uh, when you want to create the behavior or, or try to portray the personality of a particular character. Like in this scene, you have a Bowser and it's more evil because light are coming, uh, you know, from down and it's creating this effect, okay? It's exaggerating the, the gestures the, with the shadows. And this is uh, obviously the scene that Mario is visiting right now. So it's not character design, but you could argue always that uh, this scene is in the mind of the person who designs this character. We have talked about the uh, color and I would like to be cautious about this. For some people, uh, there are very clear implications about using a color or another. Like for example, when reds are uh, usually reflecting a very strong emotion, dynamic, sometimes risk, danger, okay? The truth is that the most important about color is that it looks good. And that is why we have talked about harmony. We have talked about how color works in relation to the rest of the elements. In this character for um, a game for kids, you have that the character is combining all this analog elements, uh, orange, yellow, red, okay, uh, it's uh, analogous. And then you have obviously the contrast with the green, the green of a tropical forest, uh, prehistoric tropical thing or whatever. So that is how it works. It works in relation to the context. When you are creating just a character, sometimes you don't have the context, or you, but you have, or you should have in mind always where the character is going to be. And that's why we have talked before about uh, the background of the history or, um, for example, the, um, uh, the architecture as a source of inspiration. Let me call your attention about this point. Finishing the work is not about delivering the character. You might be focused about exporting your character in Cibras or Maya, uh, being able to include that in your web portfolio. And this is a substantial part of what is to finish the work. But uh, finish the work sometime in other kind of assignments might also imply other things, like for example, uh, writing information about uh, the work. It's not just writing a couple of sentences like, uh, oh, this is my dinosaur, I wanted to do the dinosaur and I love dinosaurs. It's not about that. Uh, it should reflect the process, uh, the intellectual effort that you have done during this uh, creative process. There are guides about how to reference uh, materials provided by the university. I would start, if you don't know or if you don't remember, I would start literally with these links. Okay, and I would uh, think what uh, are the typical ways of referencing materials? All the ways to reference materials are collected in this Harvard referencing uh, system uh, adapted for the purpose of the uh, academic works presented at uh, the University of Hull. It doesn't matter what you reference, whatever it is a movie, a video game, uh, an article of a 
uh, magazine, um, a personal blog from a creative uh, designer, doesn't really matter. You can reference everything if you know how to. There is nothing wrong in looking at Pinterest or Flickr or any other source. You get a picture, you like the picture, it expresses what you want, but you don't know who did that. And therefore, you cannot acknowledge the author and you cannot uh, indicate all the people how to gather that information. That's wrong. You shouldn't do that. That's not good academic practice. What you have to do is to identify the original author. There are many tools for that. You can look for that picture on the internet. And of course, the best advice I can give in relation to referencing is to be tidy. This is about saving time as well. If you know where the things are from and you collect that information in the right moment, then you won't have to do it uh, everything at the last minute. So today we have talked about research for visual design. We have talked about how important it is to uh, define the, the right questions about the task. That is to understand the briefing or if you want to, uh, to read properly the assignment. We are spending time in planning so we save time in the rest of the process. The same when we collect references or when we uh, note down the uh, URLs where we get the information from. And that's all for today. I hope you find uh, this lesson uh, amusing as I did. And uh, see you in the workshops and in the lab. Take care.